Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. You'll get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And when I'm not asking Bruce, hey, how big was Batista's? Well, you know. One of the things I like to do is help people save money. And if you're watching this video right now and you're in a 30 year loan, man, you're overpaying your single biggest bill and you may not even realize it. I want you to do a little experiment for me. Take your calculator out, multiply your monthly house payment by 360 payments. That's how many payments there are in a 30 year loan. That big scary number, that's your total of payments. You're looking at that number? You know you can do better. Keep more of your own money right now and go to savewithconrad.com. Or maybe you've got credit card debt. Man, it's not a matter of if I can save you money with that. Your average interest rate on a credit card is more than 20%. And by the way, all the interest you pay on those credit cards, it's not tax deductible. Whereas the mortgage interest, well, that is tax deductible. So if you owe this debt, it's up to you how to pay it back. Doesn't it make sense to get the cheapest rate possible and the greatest tax deduction possible? Find out how much money you can save right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit, even scores in the 500s can be approved, and it's no cost out of pocket. But maybe best of all, we're licensed in more than 40 states. We can help more families than ever before. But how much can we save you? Find out right now for free with a quick quote from SaveWithConrad.com. Will he want a gold medal with a broken freaking neck? He's a real athlete, so give him your respect. He's got intensity, integrity, intelligence too. Oh, it's true, it's damn true. So if he ever finds you and you're chanting you suck, then he'll douse you in dairy with his big milk truck. And with one eagle slam, he'll lay you out on the floor. So listen up, it's time to go. It's the Kurt Angle Show. Hey, this is Kurt Angle, and welcome to the Kurt Angle Show. On the show today, we have one of the best female wrestlers in the whole entire world. They call her the boss, and her name is Sasha Banks. But first, let me introduce to you my co-host, Paul Bromwell. How you doing today, Paul? Kurt, I'm doing great, man. I'm so excited about this. Ever since I saw Sasha's name on this, the calendar, the show list, I have been really pumped up about this. You know that we, we oh, talk my co-hosts, the different co-hosts have been lining up for this one. I know, right? I got the hot tag. I'm really excited, man. She's one of, without a doubt, one of the biggest stars in professional wrestling. So I'm thrilled to be here. Well, we're going to patch her in. Let's patch in Sasha. Hi. How you doing, <laughs> Sasha? How's everything I'm, going, honey? I'm great. I just got back from the UK tour last night. So that is kicking in. I got Friday night smack down tonight. You're busy. But when you're the legit boss, Kurt, you got it. You know, you keep <laughs> on rolling, baby. Yes, you do. You keep on rolling, honey. And you keep on rolling. You definitely do. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you joining us on our show. And it's okay. crazy when you realize just this year you were main eventing WrestleMania. Has this been the biggest year of your career by far? Um, absolutely. I feel like 2020, 2021 were just like unbelievable for me. I, I couldn't even fathom that all of this happened so quickly. I mean, I've been I've been making history from a very young age, so it's really nothing new to me, but to do it on such a large scale of wrestle freaking mania where this is every professional wrestler's dream just to make it on the card but to main event in a singles match oh it was such a dream come true and you deserve it honey you definitely thank you so Sasha, as a longtime fan, I've been fascinated by your career, your rise to the main event of WrestleMania, like Kurt said, but also the amazing influence you've used on social media to highlight some of the people that came before you, like the amazing red and others. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel it's important for you to showcase people like that to your gigantic fan base? <sighs> well, maybe they never heard of amazing red before. And thanks to social media, you can watch wrestling from all over the world from the beginning to 2021, from years past to, to now. And there's so many different wrestlers from, again, like I said, all over the world that are incredible, that haven't really got their recognition in this professional world on such a larger scale. But Amazing Red is just an underground legend that till this day, you see matches and half of the moves that you see are moves that he invented. He invented them. That's, that's so rare in wrestling because everything has been done. 
Amazing Red is just before his time. And I want to let my fans know that I'm training with one of the greats. To me, I can't just train at the Denver Performance Center and put people's names like that. I go out and I seek the greatest so I can have it on my accolade to be like, who trained uh, Sasha Banks? Amazing Red is one of them. Well, you actually grew up a professional wrestling fan. Isn't that right? Uh, the, the biggest. Um, the biggest memory, what's your first ever... memory of professional wrestling? What's your first memory? My very first memory is when I was like three or four. Um, my birth dad was watching wrestling and I just, I didn't understand it. It just was, it was nothing. Fast forward when I was 10 years old, there was absolutely nothing on TV. I was in Iowa. I was just scrolling through the channels. And then I see WWE and I go, what the heck is this? I'm a 10 year old, a girl that loves everything girly. And I'm just watching all these sweaty men who are larger than life that are big wrestle. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Let me, uh, let me just watch it. This is the only thing that's on the, on the TV right now. Um, so I was instantly hooked by the entertainment, by the athleticism, by people just being like larger than life superheroes that I didn't see in my daily real life. I was such a shy, you know, scared little girl that when I watched wrestling, I'm like, wait, these are actually real people that are doing incredible, amazing things. I want to do this. I want to be this. Well, he's not going to do it. So I will talk about the first time you used to watch Kurt Angle wrestle. What did you think about Kurt in the ring? <sighs> I have no words. <laughs> Kurt, when you even asked me to do this podcast, I was like marking out. I was like, oh my God. Okay. Kurt, if Kurt is like top five of every wrestler's list. Kurt, you've always been absolutely one of my favorites. I've watched you since, since I was 10. I've been studying you. Kurt Angle has always been the best. He's, he's in my freaking top five. Just, just you're incredible. You, you're, you're selling the, the way that you just, ev everything that you do is just like, I'm trance to the television. I'm just like, I would love to be like him. Your you have made his real, day. Oh, uh, you made my year. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're amazing, Kurt. Thank you, Sasha. I appreciate that. Well, you think about it from the wrestling and then how he brought the comedy into it as well. He was able to evolve the entire and character. He, and he got it so fast. You got it so fast so smooth it's one thing to wrestle in the ring and, and to have good matches but to entertain to not actually do the moves and, and have backstages and and entertain people and keep them on their feet not even not even doing no drop kick not even doing an entrance just singing <laughs> spraying spraying milk everywhere i mean these are just memories that are going to be with you forever it's all about the entertainment that's what makes us like keep on watching every single week and that's why you're successful, Sasha, because you know the entertainment is the most important thing. It's the most important. The, the E is last in WWE for a reason. The <laughs> entertainment, baby. Well, Kurt had no idea I was going to ask that, so thank you for having a little fun there. But of uh, You've talked in the past <laughs> about... Go ahead. There you go. So you've talked in the past about how you were a fan of all Japan women's pro wrestling. How much of those shows, the women, the wrestling, influenced your career? So much. So when I was, again, 10, I, I said, I'm going to be a professional wrestler. And I only thought it was just WWE until I went to the library and I typed in wrestling. And I was like, wait, there's more. Find a whole new world. huh? There's a whole new world. And, and wait, there's actually women wrestlers that kick ass and are actually better than a lot of the WWE men. I was shocked. I was like, no freaking way. My Nami, Toyota, Akira, they were just like some of the greatest Bull Nakano. I was like, wow, my destiny is to be in Japan and wrestle like them. Because at my time, at my era, I couldn't watch wrestling with my mom. Because when the girls came on next, they were doing bra and panty matches. So my mom's thinking like, this is what I want to do. And I'm like, no, mom, please watch my Nami, Toyota. Or just watch Kurt Angle and Eddie. And, and I want to be like them, the, the, the female version of them. But she just didn't get it but all japan pro wrestling or all women's japan pro wrestling was top notch i watched women's wrestling all day long nonstop. i don't blame you and, and you know what you portrayed them very well you you are the next generation you are the here and now and you're doing incredible something <laughs> you have Thank no idea how proud i am of you 
that means so much to me. You had a stellar so career thus far, but you went from training to a WWE developmental contract in less than four years. Is that correct? So yeah. You pretty quickly too, right? I did. I got signed um, only two years in the independent scene, um, but that's because I I kept on sending my resume to WWE. I, every every chance that they were in Boston, I kept asking for tryouts upon tryouts upon tryouts, and I always got called to be an extra. Um, and I always talked to William Regal backstage and got advice from him, and always improved every time that they saw me. So I finally got the call from. Um, them to come down for a week-long tryout at FCW down in Tampa. And I was like, whoa, I am not going to leave this place until I get signed. I got the yes. I got the yes call. You're getting signed. I was like, oh I did it. You made your dream come true. I, I, I did it. I couldn't believe it. I, when I got that call, it was just like everything to me. It was, it was everything since I was just 10 years old. I couldn't believe it. I dedicated my whole life um to professional wrestling and at that moment at what was i 20 yes 20 years old um okay. i was like holy shit i'm doing it <laughs> were you you mentioned it 20 years old was there any worry like hey i'm maybe i'm too young or did you have any self-doubt obviously now you ooze confidence that's the boss but at that point was there any self-doubt at all as far as not being ready for it or were you just hey let's do this absolutely not i my, my goal was WWE and, and I got it right then and there. I, I had no doubt in my mind that I was going to be the greatest. Since I was 10, my, my goal was to be number one, to be the greatest of all time. So I knew from then on, I had to train my ass off to do it. And here I am to this day at 20 freaking nine, nine years later, <laughs> woo, doing it. Main eventing WrestleManias, um, being the first time ever in so many things. It's just it's crazy what your life can do if you really just believe in yourself. Well, you debuted for NXT in late 2012 and I lost the page. What was the <laughs> training experience like in NXT at that time? Um, it was really tough. Um, still back then, they didn't want us to train like the men. And we were told to train like divas and we didn't have any explanations what that meant. Um, they just came out and said, hey, no striking, no doing this, no doing that. We're like, uh, okay, but we want to do we this. We want to <laughs> we we do it. Um, but training was every single day, plus live events, plus setting up the ring, plus going to different towns and putting posters up so people can attend the shows. Right. It was every single day sacrifice. I think maybe, maybe only Sunday I had off, and that wasn't even an off day because you just had to recover mentally um, what the next day was going to bring. Is there something that you miss the most about that experience when you think back about those days? Anything that stands out you like, or is it like, I'm glad those days are behind me? Honestly, I look back and I go, could I do that again? Ooh. I, I don't know. That was some of the hardest mentally challenging, plus the funnest times of my life. But it's just a whole different ball game when you're in a a performance center of trying to make it to a raw and smackdown you're not even there yet you're still a baby so you're still just watching and hoping and there's so many people always coming in leaving going out the anxiety and stress oh wait you have to have so much heart to be here and, and have a straight face and be like you know what i can do this every day because it's my dream i gotta make it i can't give up the blood the sweat the tears all of it is worth it but would I do it again? Who knows? That stuff is, that is hard. I give it up to every talent that's ever been signed um, by the WWE because it, it takes somebody with huge, if I can say it, balls. You can. To be here. I feel strongly that saving money is important. You know, if it's not something we worry about now, boy, we are really going to worry about it later. And I want to help you get out of debt faster and do it with cheaper monthly payments. I'm talking to you if you're in a 30 year loan. Now is the time to take years off of your loan. We're routinely helping our listeners cut five, 10, even 15 years off their loan. And you can do this without perfect credit with no money out of pocket. You've just got to start at savewithconrad.com. I was going to say, I, you know, you think about your time down there and you think about influences of folks that were down there. And I want to touch on Sarah Del Rey next, but first 
I want to ask about Dusty Rhodes. You were able to be impacted by a man that, you know, so many of us grew up fans of, and he is uh, is behind the idea and the brainchild of so many fun events. I remember wrestling as a kid, but you got to be touched by Dusty Rhodes in a great way. Can you talk about Dusty? Legit touched by Angel, baby. Um, Dusty, I am so thankful and so uh, just blessed that I got to learn underneath his learning tree. Um, I feel like the generation that you see now that got to learn from Dusty are so different than, than the new talent coming up. And, and that's no, no disrespect to them. He was just somebody that was just so different. And he, he threw stars at you so you can get some spark and confidence in yourself that you know that you can do anything that's possible. He might bullshit you. <laughs> he might lie to you and tell you a fake story, but he made you believe in yourself. Um, and he is just such a legendary human. Like I, again, the talent that got to work with him, we're just, we're, we're so different. Mm. We're so different than everybody else. There was something that was just so magical and captivating about Dusty Rhodes that you, you just don't see in people anymore. The other uh, big influence I wanted to have you talk about was Sarah Del Rey. Uh, mm -hmm. She's been a huge influence with the rise of a lot of the women's careers. What can you tell us about her? Well, I was a fan of her before I even got signed because she was considered the best women's wrestler in the world. Um, and funny than that, we had the same tryout together. So it's so crazy, our destiny together. But then we find out that she's going to be the female trainer. She has influenced and helped us so much and never gave up on us and always pushed and fought for us to have more. She wanted us to fight like the men to, to have longer time and just to have um, the same respect because that's what she wanted back in her day when she was in the independence tra training and traveling all over the world. So she is one of the best and the most dedicated women I've ever seen to the sport. And I thank her so much for everything that she's taught me. Would she say, would you say that she was an ambassador for women's wrestling? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Absolutely. We couldn't have done it without her. Well, your fortunes change when you debut the boss character in NXT. How mm -hmm. important has that changed for your career? It was a, the biggest, it was the entertainment. It was the character. You know, I had the wrestling down, but I didn't have that E down so much. I didn't have that entertainment. You know, I needed people to like look at me and know exactly who I was right when my entrance hit, right when my music hit. I need you to know that I'm the boss. You know, I was getting used left and right of just putting other people over. And I was, I was like, no, this is not my destiny. My, my destiny is to be the face of this company. So I needed to look within myself. And I was like, you know what? You need to remember that Snoop Dogg is your cousin, first of all. <laughs> you need to look about around with the influence in your life and see what you like. And I was remembering like, wait, everybody calls Snoop Dogg boss. And I like that. And I'm like, I want people calling me boss. I want people at their hands and feet saying boss and wanting to get this for me and doing this. And I was like, okay, let me take a little bit from him. Let me take a little bit from Kanye West. Let me take a little bit from Nicki Minaj. And I just mixed everything. And I kept on working with Dusty Rhodes and it finally just clicked. And then the legit boss took off in NXT. That's what I, that's what I was going to ask next. Who was that person that you kind of filtered those ideas through, but there it was the magic of dusty. Once again, it was dusty Rhodes. Tyler breeze helped me so much. Those are the two people in NXT that, um, just really, really fully made me believe in everything that I was doing was, was going right. Also, if I can give credit to Joey Mercury and Norman Smiley as well. <laughs> Absolutely. No, good stuff. So your NXT women's title reign starts February of 2015 with a win over Charlotte in a four-way that also involved Becky and Bailey. And a lot's been said over the emergence of the four horsewomen. I'm sure you hear it all the time. Did you ever envision at that time that the four of you would eventually be running the professional wrestling world? <sighs> at that time? Nah, not at that time, not at that moment. But after, after that match, we knew. We wanted that match to prove something. We were saying, let this be the match of the night. Let us steal the show. Let, let's make everybody know that we are here not to play. We are here to change the game. And after that match, I feel like the shift just started just happening. The respect level with the fans and us just kind of just went, whoop. And people just wanted to see that shift and change. It's like, 
no, we don't want to see three minute matches anymore. We actually want to see girls, their character development, time, promos, storylines. They, they wanted to see it and they were fully behind us. So um, I'm so also thankful to the NXT audience because they were watching us from the very beginning grow. Well, I have to ask the four horsewomen and the Ronda Rousey four horsewomen was there real heat? <laughs> was there real heat, Sasha? Be honest. I can only speak for myself. <laughs> there, there might be a little tension. I, uh, I don't know real heat. I was pissed off that Ronda Rousey can come in, get more money than me, get a, get a locker room than me, and, and bring all these people backstage and get more time than me. I'm like, excuse me, who is you and what you do? <laughs> Besides respecting everything that she's done in the UFC and that fight world, when it comes to the squared circle, that's my home. That's where that's that's why I'm the legit boss, not Ronda Rousey. So there could have been a lot of tension from that. And the other three, I just didn't know. But I didn't even know why they called themselves the four horsewomen. I was like, thank you so much for being a fan. Um, but that was our trademark. Second after Ric Flair in WCW. You know what I'm saying? I like it. What do you what are your thoughts on maybe someday down the road again working with Ronda? Would you be open to doing uh, that? I'm so down to work with Ronda again. I loved our match um, at Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. I loved your match at WrestleMania, Kurt. Okay. Chef's kiss. Oh my God, that's why you're the greatest. But to have a match with somebody that doesn't have um, the professional wrestling background and it was just so new and fresh, I love challenges like that. And she got it so quick because she did love it. She was a fan. And because of her, her fighting background, she knew just how to take things. And it just kind of flowed so easily and naturally for her. So she was, she was awesome to work with. And I would love to have another match with her again. Well, Sasha, we're going to move on to the legendary Banks versus Bailey NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Uh, mm -hmm. That was that flag in the ground moment for both of you. What do you remember of that night? And is it one of those nights that you will never get tired of talking about? <laughs> Or are yeah, you it's crazy? Yeah. Um, because that's that's I always get asked in every single yeah, I'm sure. It's now on stop, but it is because I can remember my whole day of that day from, from waking up to going to sleep. I remember absolutely everything, and I can't remember that for anything else because <laughs> you can't. <laughs> um, but NXT Brooklyn was just something for me i wanted to leave a legacy and i wanted to leave a stamp being like i'm the greatest remember that i was leaving nxt i was giving um bailey the nxt women's championship and i was going to the main roster finally it was kind of like a, a send-off um but that was our first time having an nxt takeover outside of full cell which only holds maybe what 800 people mm -hmm. so we sold out the barclay center um to us we were competing with Raw, SmackDown, and SummerSlam. So we wanted to be the talk of the weekend. We wanted to have the match of the night, and I wanted to have the greatest women's wrestler, greatest women's match of all time. And I feel like that match, it really is. It very well could be, Sasha. Uh, you would debut on the main roster in July of 2015. How excited were you to finally get your chance? I felt like I was more nervous than excited. I couldn't believe it. I was like is this for real? Wait, we're getting called up. I only found out two days before. Oh, wow. So I didn't have like a month to prepare or a week to prepare. It was just two days before. I just couldn't believe it. And I couldn't like get excited until the, mo the moment actually happened because I was just like more nervous than anything. I was like, are we going to be treated like divas? Are we going to be treated like how we were at NXT? Are they going to like us? I just had all these thoughts. They're, they're me, Charlotte, Becky, we're coming up at the same time. Are we going to get like compete against each other? I just didn't know what was going to happen, but it was such a dream come true when my entrance finally hit after Stephanie McMahon introduced me and I got hit with Naomi and Tamina, like the greatest humans of all time. I couldn't have asked for a better debut. It was, it was incredible. Well, Sasha, speaking of uh, the debut and NXT, you were a staple of NXT for so many years but now there's been some changes in NXT. They've been rebranded. Have you had a chance to check out NXT 2.0? And if so, what do you think of it? 
I haven't. I'm, I'm really booked and busy on Wednesdays. Um, but from the commercials I see, I like the colors. <laughs> you're you're down I with got, the branding colors. I, I like with the, I like the colors. I got to meet um, Braun Breaker um, this past weekend at the UK tour, who is uh, Rick Steiner's son. I love the Steiners, and he was. Oh my God. Amazing. I think he's only been training like six months and I couldn't believe it. Um, what a natural gifted talent. So I, if, if guys like that can get opportunities to come and do live events and UK tours, I think that's incredible for NXT. Um, and I, if I'm free on Wednesdays, I'm going to catch it. Well, how big of a deal was it getting to your WrestleMania debut in Dallas? Who we that was the biggest. I couldn't believe it when I actually got to Dallas and I got to see myself, Charlotte and Becky's picture on the freaking stadium. I think I just bursted into tears because I just couldn't, I just couldn't believe that we were getting a WrestleMania match first that fast. And it for the Raw Women's Championship because we were being rebranded from divas to superstars. So to me, that whole match was just something where it, it felt like an NXT takeover where I just had to prove myself again. This was my moment. This is my debut WrestleMania. I remember going to WrestleMania with Snoop Dogg and, and walking down the ramp with him when he went to rehearsals. And I was like, I'm going to do this one day. And then I got called an NXT to do Triple H's entrance. And I'm standing there in WrestleMania on the stage. And I'm like, Ooh, I can't wait to have my own entrance one day. <laughs> Next thing you know it, I'm having my own entrance, but with my cousin Snoop Dogg. <laughs> how does this work it, it's, just, it's just so cool and that match and, and those fans incredible mm. what, a, what a match well your career has been full of firsts but nothing compares to I'm sure being the first woman to main event a pay-per-view and also be in a Hell in a Cell match and by the way that was very close to home in Boston as well what, what does that mm -hmm. feel like the first time there um which one do we say first? The Hell in a Cell one. Uh, that was crazy because I remember having a car service from New York to Boston after doing a signing. And I got that call that night that me and Charlotte would be main eventing. And I was just like, what? First of all, in Boston, my hometown and in, in, in a Hell in a Cell match, I was legit on the floor of the car service, just like in shock, shaking. I was just like, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Can and you, now I've been in three of them. <laughs> yeah. Now talk about the brutality of that match, if you can, because it, it's, it's, it, you, and I'm, I'm sorry. I just, as a fan watching, you take a beating in, in, in a hell in a cell match. And it's unbelievable. The abuse that one can take in, 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 male or female, mm -hmm. but if you can kind of share what it's like coming out of one of those type of matches. It is, it's, it's rough. It's the most painful match I've ever been in besides maybe money in the bank. I think Helena Cell is getting hit with a kendo stick. I still have a line and a bruise on my leg till this day, an indent. Um, that match has always changed my career because it just makes me think differently on how I structure a match. How do I protect myself? How do I just entertain while getting hit with a chair? going through a table again with the kendo sticks and then the steel cage itself it, it's just no, it's no joke you can cut yourself on those things um becky lynch put a chair in the freaking steel cage and lifted me up and, and drop kicked me it, it's just it's just crazy it's one of those structures that is just unforgivable um and you feel it for a month after mm. <laughs> mm. In my case, a year. I still got this bruise, and it pisses me off. <laughs> well, you went over 50 minutes in the first Rumble for women. That means you were basically the captain of the match. Were you happy to be in that role? I was so happy. I was manifesting that. I wanted to be number one so bad that when we finally went in and they told me that I was going to be number one, I was like, oh, holy freaking yeah. <laughs> and then finding out who was going to be in the Royal Rumble, um, all these women that I grew up watching, I was just like in such a, like a, a trance that I couldn't even believe that this was happening. And, and let's not forget that we main evented Royal Rumble with this women's Royal Rumble match. So there is so many things going on in my mind because um, it's when you have to do like first time evers, 
the pressure is just more on you because you just don't want to disappoint. You don't want to disappoint. And that's just the pressure that I put on myself. I'm like, send these people going home happy as hell and make sure you make them feel like how you feel. I want everybody to feel how I feel when I leave. Well, you mentioned uh, first time evers, and I think about women's evolution, the pay-per-view. And uh, there was a six woman tag team match with you and, and Bailey Natalia against the riot squad. As we yeah. sit here today, I have to ask you, do you see evolution to happening sometime down the road? I get asked that a lot too. And the years are, you know, they're ticking, but I absolutely see evolution number two happening. It can't not happen. It was so incredible being part of evolution and, and seeing all those incredible women perform. Um, that show from top to bottom was one of my favorite WWE pay-per-views. I definitely think there needs to be an evolution evolution too. Um, we have more than enough talent. I think this is the best women's roster roster we've ever had. Um, and I want to face Trish Stratus. So come on, let's make it happen. And we will get there. Don't worry. Uh, I have some Trish Stratus for you towards the end of this. Go <laughs> ahead, Kurt. Well, your cousin Snoop Dogg, we talked about him earlier. He's been a big supporter of your career. How big a fan of, of how big of a fan is he of yours? He is one of my biggest fans. Um, you know, I think what makes us have a good connection is because his, his love for wrestling. He grew up loving wrestling. He loves Jimmy Snuka. When I went to WrestleMania with him at um, when I was 16, he's like, who's that? Who's that? I was naming all these wrestlers. I'm like, is that, is that? He's this, this, this. So our connection like that is just so cool. Um, he's so supportive. He will text me or call me with any advice that I need. And he's always watching my big pay-per-view. So it's so cool to see and, and just have that support from someone that's so iconic in this world. So he's following you up until Oh, he's, he's following me. He's so following me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and WWE. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Sasha, the boss and hug connection, that was another fun story line, becoming the yeah. inaugural women tag team champions. Here we go again, talking about first. And uh, that has to rank as another high achievement in your career. Uh, there's been some speculation and talk about when you and Bailey lost the titles at WrestleMania. What mm -hmm. can you share with us about that time period and your feelings on the business? Oh, well, I was going through so much at that time. Um, I did a WWE Chronicle speaking of that. Um, I was just going through a dark time and I just was losing my love and my, my, my light in my eyes. And I just didn't like who I was becoming as a person. So after WrestleMania, after we dropped the titles, I was just like, you know what? I got to go. I got to go find myself. I got to go find what makes me happy because all I know is this. All I know is wrestling. All I know is giving it 120% and just maybe not seeing the things that I wanted rep and rewarded back to me. So I just had to take a moment, take a break and just find myself. Um, and it was the best thing I think I've ever done for myself my whole, my whole life. I've never felt better. And I've, I've had the greatest career ever since then. <laughs> Well, it seems like the most fun you had in your career was teaming with Bailey. How much fun were you having with her? Uh, when you get to team with your best friend um, and someone who is just like you, she is, we are like one of the same. We were having the greatest time ever. And I loved tag teaming with her. It's such a different art than being a singles wrestler. Um, tag team wrestling is just an art of its own. And to learn with her, to create with her and just think of different ideas and, and wanting to make it more so the woman can get represented, not just the, the SmackDown Women's Championship, not just the Raw. We wanted more. So we wanted to make it the best. And we've had the greatest time, especially during the pandemic, um, being the tag team champions. Well, you come back, you become the women's uh, SmackDown champion, and, uh, and here's Bianca Belair. She wins the Royal Rumble. That means that you two are going to face each other at the big WrestleMania, the show of shows, and, and not only face off each other, but your main eventing, which we talked about. Talk to us about how much this means to you and so many others. I mean, you both win an ESPY for WWE Moment of the Year. That is so crazy. It's... Um... Again, I didn't know if we were going to main event, main event WrestleMania, but I was praying and dreaming about it. Um, I felt like I was really competing with Drew and Bobby. And that whole week, I was just like, do I talk to Vince? Do I not? Do I talk to Vince? Um, 
I was like, you know what? If he thinks I'm freaking good and I can main event, just let it happen. Next thing you know, I get to freaking WrestleMania. I find out I'm main eventing. How freaking cool is that? The day before, I'm like, wow. Everything can just come into fruition if you just don't give up on your dream. Um, I went out there and I was on a whole different level and zone that I've never been in the ring before like that. Um, this was our first time back in front of fans after a year and a half that I just couldn't believe even happened. Um, to wrestle without any like fans is one of the hardest things I've ever experienced, but I'm so thankful to know that I can do it and I can do anything. Um, and to be rewarded with WrestleMania at 37 um, against Bianca Belair, who her talent just speaks for herself. She came in so fast, so quick and got it like you, Kurt. She is, she is incredible. And I just love to see her growth and for her to come in so quick and so fast and get like this. I can't wait to see in the next five years, how much bigger she's going to be. Sasha, can you, can you walk us through who tells you, you said they told me the day of who tells you the day before about that you're main eventing. <laughs> Everybody can tell me so it could be somebody different, but who told me it was TJ Wilson. Okay. Yes, he told me, and I was just in shock. I was, like, crying. <laughs> well, you sowed some emotion at the beginning of the match as the bell rang in Tampa. What did you tell yourself to get yourself back into the game? Oof. I looked at Bianca, and I was like, damn it. I'm supposed to be the bad guy. Why are you about to cry? <laughs> and I just couldn't believe it because the fans were just on their feet, and I just had to take that moment in, and I just couldn't help but just to have a – huge smile being like, oh, holy shit, this, this is the main event. All right, let's snap into it. Let's go. It's go time. It was just one of those just instances. I just had to look out and just be like, this is real. And now it's game time. So you've talked about Bianca. You had that great match. You win the SB. You talked about the women's division before we get to Trish. Cause, cause that's next. What about the talent in the locker room now? Is there some ladies that you see that you think, man, I can't wait to get my hands on them or work with them? Who were some people yes, that you're yeah. looking forward to work with? I can't wait to work with Rhea Ripley. Um, I got a small taste at Survivor Series maybe two years ago. Um, and then we'll get a little taste again and next Sunday. Um, I can't wait to work with her, Tony Storm. I'm so excited to work with Shotzi. And just even women that I been in the locker room for a long time and still haven't had like a singles match. Natalia Nightheart, oh my, we would kill it in the ring. Um, Naomi, uh, Shayna Baszler, I love her style. So I can't wait to, you know, dive into my Kurt Angle tapes and then pull out some stuff that I can do on her. Um, there's just so many, I think top to bottom. Again, this is the best division it's, that we've ever had. Uh, that's exciting. Incredible, yes. So we've talked a lot today about the growth of the women's division. And I think you would agree. One of the pioneers has been Trish Stratus. And you <laughs> recently said on the WWE bump for all those listening that didn't hear this to quote you, you said, I'm waiting for Trish. That's all on her. I feel like she's been dodging me. She's not been answering my calls. I'm all game. I'm always ready. I stay ready. So whenever Trish is ready for me, she knows where to find me. Uh -huh. And then probably two snaps. I don't know. And then, uh, well, Trish has responded via Vibe 105 Sports. And she says, Sasha, saying? here we go. And you haven't heard this. We talked oh, about this beforehand. Not. This is breaking news. Uh -huh. She has brought so much to the company and elevated women in the industry from what she's done. And I think fans would love to see that. I would love to whoop her butt and prove how I'm the best. And, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, so to close up our conversation, let's leave it with that little button and say perhaps one day if I decide to go back in the ring, I might have to deliver a little stratisfaction to the bank, to the boss. There you go. So how would you like to respond to that, Sasha? No swear words. No, no you swear. can. It's good. It's Kurt Angle Show, baby. <laughs> no, no swear. Um, but I'm so glad to hear that she's down. I, um, I know she's booked and busy. I know that she's a mother. Um, but Trish, again, whenever you are ready, give me a call. I'm best friends with Vince. I know that you're not. <laughs> I have this number on speed dial. So if you need it, you can give me my number. You can, you can text me if you have it, slide into my DMs. I'll let them know. It will make millions, baby. This is going to be the greatest match of all time. So let's do it, Trish. Get done with that work. 
Put the kids to bed and come fight me. Put the kids to bed and come fight me. I love it. Let my family save your family some cash. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket, but we will save you money. It's not a matter if, it's a matter of how much. Save with Conrad.com. I love it, Kurt. That was awesome. <laughs> Put the kids to bed. The boss has spoken. The boss has truly oh. spoken, and she is the boss, and she deserves to be. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Sasha, listen, this has been an absolute pleasure, hasn't it? Right, Kurt? Yeah, I want to thank you for coming on our show. I really do appreciate it, honey. I thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I'm a big fan of yours. I know you're oh, a huge fan of mine. I am. The, the respect is mutual, and I just want thank to say you. thank you. Thank you so much, Kurt. You're incredible, um, and I'm so honored to be on your podcast and talk to you today. Well, good luck in the future. I'll be following you. Thank you. Right, All right. Good luck. Thank you, Sasha. Appreciate it. Awesome. All Thank you guys. All right. All right, Kurt. Well, there it is. Sasha Banks. I know she's off to, uh, to SmackDown. Uh, so that was a lot of fun, man. That was great. Another fun interview. That was a lot of fun. She has so much charisma, so well-spoken, uh, and a great look. I mean, you can't deny her look. She looks incredible. Yeah. So this girl has all the facets. I knew early on she was going to be a huge star. Yeah. And she absolutely is. When I told my son that I was going to get to be a part of this, he's 14 years old. And, uh, he was like, dad, no way. So this just, I can't wait to show him this interview and all this. This has just been a highlight for me too, as well. So really appreciate you letting me be a part of this, Kurt, before we log off though, uh, you and I have some things to talk about in terms of how we can help you out. Right, Kurt? Yes. Yes. All right. We got the chicken snacks right here. That's right. Physically Fit Nutrition. You can get them at physicallyfit.com. There are 11 different flavors, high protein, low carbohydrate, incredible taste. You're going to love these. Uh, we have Kung Po, Sriracha, uh, <laughs> Sasha. Uh, we have I don't know. I'm like, is it going to mess up if I leave? No, you're totally good, Sasha. You <laughs> okay, can exit. Bye, She's like, all right, so see much. ya. Yep. Buffalo wing and blue cheese. We have cinnamon swirl. Hey, she might want some chicken snacks. You never know, Kurt. Send her some. Why <laughs> send her some. There you Sasha, go. Get back on here. I need your address. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, go to physicallyfit.com and grab these. You're going to love them. And I want to thank everybody that's been supporting my business. I really do appreciate it. Now that's awesome. Physicallyfit.com. Hey, this is a great time of year too. If you're thinking about trying them out, maybe uh, stocking stuffers or something like that as well. Right, Kurt? Yeah. Yes, sir. You can get them for stocking stuffers. You could, you could just get them to snack on. You get them to, for a meal if you want it. <laughs> Eat them while you're watching them Christmas movies, right? Yeah. Watching movies, listening to music, listening to the Kurt Angle show. <laughs> I love you, Kurt. That's great. And also don't forget about some other things too, right? So physicallyfit.com angle pod for that 20% off, but go to KurtAnglebrand.com for some more Kurt Angle swag. Yes, we have cowboy hats, birthday cards, milk cartons, t-shirts, uh, autograph photos. Uh, we have it all. We have the whole ball of wax. Uh, I made the prices very affordable for all the fans. Try to keep it low. Go to KurtAnglebrand.com and you can order them on the website. Or if you have an item you want signed at home or a, a world title championship belt that you uh, want signed by me, send it to the address on the website and I will personalize it and send it back to you. All you have to do is send a prepaid postage envelope and, uh, and a small donation for charity. You do that, I'll get the autograph back to you as soon as possible. Again, more great uh, Christmas ideas if you celebrate and are into Christmas and wanting to try to find things. Mention it to your spouse if it's for you. Hey, hey, honey, go over, check out, uh, you know, Kurt's website, KurtAnglebrand.com. I'd love to have some stuff signed by him for Christmas. Let's take advantage of this opportunity uh, that Kurt can do it. And speaking of autographs on belts, Kurt, I would be remiss if I did not bring up this opportunity about the Wildcat belt, uh, the Hero Championship belt that is now available. As far as I know, there are still four belts left. You have one and I have one, and there's four more custom belts that will be numbered that are autographed by you. The certificate of authenticity is autographed by you. It is made by our buddy Andrew at wildcatbelts.com. 
He makes all the WWE belts, the NXT belts. It's an incredible job. Incredible. My, my, my belt is immaculate. I completely love it. Uh, the artwork is amazing. I think it's 24 karat gold plated. That's right. Uh, it's really beautiful belt. Yeah, and it's it's numbered, and the numbering is stamped into the leather as well. So uh, a tremendous opportunity to have something that will not be around. You will be in rare air if you own one of these belts, and that's, and that's for those special Kurt Angle fans. For those watching on adfreeshows.com, it is sitting directly over my shoulder. You can see it right there. But you can also check it out on a the action figure next to it. The action figure and Kurt, that action figure, I had a custom made mini Kurt Angle belt made for the action figure. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll show it to you once we log off air here. But I had the custom made mini version made of that belt for it. That is freaking awesome. <laughs> hey, if I'm going in, I'm going all in, Kurt Angle, baby. All so there the we go. That's <laughs> right. Well, hey, listen, check us out, adfreeshows.com. Kurt, you and I are going to do a bonus episode this month, the month of November, where we're going to sit 30th, down. Right? That's right. November 30th, you and I are going to sit down, and we're going to record and watch together your first Impact match with Abyss. And we're going to uh, ask our Ad Free Show members to send us in questions that you'll answer during that recording. Uh, we'll watch the match together. We'll record it on video so they can see the match too. If you're on the fence about Ad Free Shows, I'm telling you, not only do you get these shows ad-free, commercial-free, and on video, but the bonus episodes is where it's at, Kurt. That's where you and I really get to do some fun stuff together. Yeah, we do bonus episodes on ad-free shows. We do some Q&As with the fans. Uh, a lot of stuff with Top Guy. Uh, it, yeah. It's a lot of fun, and and we, we really have a good relationship with the fans from uh, ad-free shows. That's right. That's the cool thing about it. We personally know each other. Yeah. Yeah. The relationships that are born from that. Uh, and if you're thinking about being a top guy, we have a top guy weekend every year. Kurt came out to that in Chicago and got to shake hands and take pictures with all the top guys. It was a great time. So a lot of fun. There were a couple of hundred top guys out there. It was really cool. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, next week, Kurt Conrad's back and the two of you are going to be talking all things survivor series, 2001. That event was held in Greensboro, North Carolina. Just to give you all a taste of that, it's Team Alliance. Kurt's part of Team Alliance, and they're taking on Team WWF. And, of course, you have to cover that. It's Thanksgiving season, so what better time to talk Survivor Series and next week. But uh, that's going to do it for us this week, Kurt. I had a lot of fun with Sasha. I did, too. She is, she is such a great individual, talented person, very smart, beautiful. She's a whole ball of wax. That girl is so very talented. And you know what? She was so great to work with, even behind the scenes, getting ready for the show, coming on, giving us her time. You know, like she said, hey, I'm just coming back from the UK, but being willing to carve out an hour, heading right to SmackDown. Uh, I just can't imagine that road schedule, Kurt. Oh, yeah. She's she's busy as heck. I, I've been there, done that, and it, it's it's ridiculous. For her to take time out for an hour and do this podcast, that's pretty incredible. There you go. Well, guys, on behalf of Kurt Angle, this is Paul Bromwell, and we'll see you again next week right here on The Kurt Angle Show. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.